Hi, I'm Keisha Price. I'm from Dover, Delaware. When I was getting ready to go to college, I was loading up the U-Haul with my mom and my dad and my baby brother. My boyfriend comes over and he's got flowers and he gives me a kiss and he's like, ah, oh, babe, I'm so glad that you're gonna be going away to college, but you know, you're leaving me. I'm gonna be a senior in high school. You're a freshman in college, you know. We're gonna have this transition period. We won't have our Valentine's Day together and I can't put the giant frog in your car in the middle of second period. So we kiss, we, you know, say goodbye and drive off with my family. We end up on UD campus. Everyone is there, There's so many people, freshmen, parents, tears, crying. So fast forward to that night, um, it's club activities night and the Little Bob, and that's kind of like the student center and the slash the fitness center for non-athletes, I'm a basketball player, so I head over to the club basketball table and I see over there is someone I'm like, I feel like I know her, but she's got long dreads, uh, wearing a fitted hat. I remember in the blue and gold game, which is um, the all-star high school game for Delaware, there was this girl who in the first three minutes of the game flies over the announcer stand after a loose ball gets the loose ball, throws it back in bounds to the, my team, <laughs> and tears her ACL. That was Morgs. She's like, yes, that is exactly me. I'm like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? She's like, I'm trying out for a club basketball. And I'm like, great, I don't know anyone here. I'm so glad that I you know, met you here. And she's like, well, let's go shoot around. And then as we're about to walk away, two other girls walk up and one of them is super cute. And I'm just like, whoa, what are these emotions happening? Why is Mariah Carey playing Dream Lover in the background? Like, where am I at? Um, and I, we walk over and we're like, hey, what's up, you guys? And they're like, hi, um, are you trying out for club basketball? And the one taller girl who I'll call Ollie, she was trying out, but her friend who I'll call Marie was the one who I had the crush on. So come to find out that they're new from Delaware and they met each other that summer. So they have kind of a repertoire and now I've met Morgs again. So we're kind of like this awesome foursome. Uh, we end up going uh, to the basketball hoops in the Little Bob that night and just shooting around and kind of talking and the whole time staring at Marie, like looking at her strong legs. She had like the world's toughest calves. It's a really cool night and Morgs and I are just like walking back to our dorm, which is on the north side of campus. And they lived in like kind of central campus. And I'm like, yo, that girl was so cute. What's going on? I'm like, I have a whole boyfriend. And she's like, that's because you're gay. <laughs> I was like, I am not gay. I am a tomboy, but I have a whole boyfriend. She's like, okay, for now. Fast forward, it's the next day and we're at basketball tryouts. And it's me, Morgs, Ollie, and Marie is there kind of just watching and hanging out. But because I, you know, have a crush, I'm trying to impress her. So I'm going ham on the court. Like, this is first day of practice. I'm slapping the backboard, blocking people's shots across the court. Like, oh, just getting in their face. And I can see that she's like, yeah, she's really good. She's impressed, right? So we end up scrimmaging and me and Ali are uh, playing against each other. And she ends up fouling me in the face and Marie, I can hear on the side, like, that's not cool, that's not cool, you know, watch out for her face, that's the money maker. And I'm like, oh, I feel like this girl's flirting with me. So I'm like, oh, Morris, did you hear that? And, she, and Morris is over like grinning her face off. She's like, you're gay. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So end of practice, we all make the team and we end up kind of shooting around again, but we, end up making plans to go to this dance party the next day, which is for all the freshmen. It's called the Freshman Fling, but it is pretty much just a giant house party in the Little Bob for all the freshmen, and we all agree to meet up. So we're getting ready in Morgz's dorm room, and I'm wearing like these old navy girl jeans. They're tight, and I have on this like kind of low-cut V-shirt. I told her, I was like, I do not feel like a boss. She's like, I know you need to pick some clothes from my, like, from my wardrobe here. Get your gayness up. So I end up like getting, um, I still wear my jeans, but I end up wearing like a nice jersey and I wear like a fitted hat and I wear it backwards. So we meet Ollie and Marie and we all go to the party together and it's cool, it's chill. It's so many people there and we're all kind of like in the corner clicked up. My boyfriend actually texts me and is like, hey, miss you, hope you're having a good time. Give me a call when you get back to your room. Um, love you. I'll see you when you get there. And I'm like, oh, okay, kissy face, all that great stuff. Mind you, I'm like this whole other person right now. <laughs> and 
<laughs> so we all start dancing. It's cool. Um, and then the song Salt Shaker by Ying Yang Twins comes on. And you should see Marie's face. So she just starts twerking and dropping it hot. Like, doesn't care who's next to her. Grabs Morg's closest person. Starts dancing with her. Just throwing her all kinds of ass all in her face. And I'm like, damn, really jealous here. And so me and Ollie start dancing. And we're all kind of having a great time. And then like halfway between the song, Morris looks over and she's like, yo, right here. And I'm like, what's going on? She's like, we're about to Houdini this guy. And I'm like, what? She's like, we're going to switch places. And I'm like, all right, okay, cool. So we're like, one, two, three, Houdini. And then like right after the song picked back up, she starts throwing it back on me, looks back and she smiles and just goes even harder. And I'm like, yes, this is happening. Like finally, this is going down. And we end up dancing for like four more songs. We have like probably five more drinks. I mean, it's jungle juice. So, you know, people are turned by the end of the night. It's getting kind of late. The party's winding down and we're like, well, we don't want the party to stop. Like, let's go back. Um, it's called the North Bridge, but it's kind of like a halfway point between uh, where they lived and where we lived. So we go back out, walk to the bridge, kind of just hanging out, talking, having more drinks. Morgs and Ollie end up like going, seeing a friend that they know. So it's just me and Marie. And I'm like kind of super nervous, don't even know what's going on. And we're sharing a drink at this point. So we're also really close together. We end up like making out on the bridge. And I'm like, oh my God, I've only kissed two people to this point, period. And they were both boys. Long story short, we end up going back to my apartment. And after that day, I was definitely 100% gay and never looked back. Actually never even texted my boyfriend back. And surprisingly, in a world before ghosting, this is 2006, we absolutely ghosted each other. Me and Marie ended up dating for three years and 10 years later, I'm still super gay. So I'd like to thank Morgs for, you know, being my gay spirit guide, telling me I was gay, waiting patiently for me to accept that, Houdini making magic happen and you know just being there every step of the way still my best friend to this very day and we do the exact same things that we used to do then so it's good to know you know when you find yourself you find yourself in that way